I always think the vectors questions are some of the hardest, even if they appear early on, because they're just different every time. You've got to remember some basic principles and ideas and never be afraid to just get a sketch down. So if I have the origin and I'm going to A, then that would describe this position vector 3, 2, and then there's going to be a 0 as well for the K components. And then to B, we've got 4, 2, minus 5. So if I want the length of AB, I'm going to need to find the vector AB or, or BA, but I might as well just find AB. And you need to think about a vector like a movement. So to go from A to B, I could take a diversion and go A to O. And then from O to B, and I would add these together, these two movements. But AO is actually minus OA, so it becomes OB minus OA. And you always do this with vectors. It's always the second one minus the first one, essentially. But don't, never be afraid to just get a diagram down to, to show it fully. So that means it's going to be 4, 2, minus 5, minus 3, 2, 0, which gives 1, 0, minus 5 for AB. Now to find the length. We use 3D Pythagoras. It's simply 1 squared plus 0 squared plus minus 5 squared. In fact, the 0 in this case just means we can use 2D Pythagoras, but in general, it would be 3D for any vector. And that's 1 plus 25, so 26, and therefore the exact length is root 26. Now, before I move on, I'm just going to very quickly talk about where that comes from. So I can draw a cuboid. And let's say I want to work out this diagonal length. Well, I can turn it into a right angle triangle by going along like this and up. So if I go along X and into the page Y, then the length of the diagonal on the, on the ground would be root X squared Y squared. And if this is Z, this is another right angle, and so it becomes root x squared plus y squared squared plus z squared square rooted. The square and the square root cancel there. And so I'm left with the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's, that's basically where it comes from and why we can just very quickly square and add the numbers to get the length of the 3D vector or very similar for the distance between two points in three dimensional space. On to part B. I'm going to talk about two ways of doing this question. First of all, I'm going to show you how I did it. So we're told that P has a position vector P minus 3K and it lies on the circumference of a circle. And the diameter is AB, which means A and B also lie on the circle. So let's draw this line in. Okay, I might just move them along slightly to make it look like it is the center. Okay, here's O. And then what I decided to do was look at the center of the circle because then I can start relating distances. I know the distance AB. And so if I have that, I get the radius. And actually, that's not a bad idea to just write that in. AM is going to equal root 26 over 2. And that's going to equal PM. So if I can work out PM in terms of this unknown little p, then I can set them equal. That seems a pretty good strategy, but how to do that? Well, I can, I'm first of all going to find out OM. And there's a quick way to find out OM, because it's the midpoint of AB. Because if you go along A and then um, well, basically, you can create this little parallelogram. OA plus OB would get you to here. And then if you do half of it, then you get to the middle. So OM is actually a half of OA plus OB. So it's going to be 7 over 2, 
4 over 2, so just 2, and minus 5 over 2. By the way, if you don't know that, well, first of all, like do learn it because it's really useful. And I've seen questions that basically require you to use it or have knowledge of it. If you're not aware of that, then you could always do, um, you could do, oh, you could find out AB, which we actually we already have, and then do, so OM. Another way of getting from O to M would be going, would be doing OA plus a half AB. We know both of those, and it would would give the same answer. Okay, so I'm not going to go through that bit, but that's an alternative. So we have OM, and now I can find out what PM is there for. Because PM is going to be OM minus OP. I'm using that, oh, minus, using that second minus first idea. So I need to be a minus. So 7 over 2, 2, minus 5 over 2, minus, actually, let me write it as a vector. You can, you can then subtract them as normal, but I just don't, I don't want to rush it. So P, keep thinking, I'm going to accidentally write, so I'm going to write 0, J, just to remind myself. So 0, minus 3. And that gives 7 over 2, minus P, 2 minus 5 over 2, minus minus 3, that's going to become a half. And therefore, PM is 7 over 2 minus P squared, plus 2 squared, which is 4, plus a half squared, which is a quarter. And that's equal to AM squared, Which is going to be 26 over 4 or 13 over 2. So I've created an equation involving P and I just need to solve it. Okay. I'm not going to expand the bracket, in fact, I don't need to. So 13 over 2 minus a quarter minus 4 gives 9 over 4. 7 over 2 minus p squared is equal to 9 over 4. In fact, when you have this, you can just swap it around. You can just make it p minus 7 over 2, because it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. You're then squaring it. So that's just a little hint, just to avoid having to deal with a, a negative there. So what I can do now is uh, square root. So p minus 7 over 2 is going to be plus or minus, and this is nice because uh, both of these are square numbers. So p minus 7 over 2 is plus or minus 3 over 2. Therefore, p is going to be 3 over 2 plus 7 over 2, 10 over 2, or 5, or minus 3 over 2 um, plus 7 over 2, which will become 4 over 2, which gives me 2. Those are our two answers. This has turned into quite an involved uh, solution. But I'm not done because I'm going to show you the way the mark scheme did it. Although having tried it, I actually prefer my method. So in the same sort of way, I'm going to set up A and B here and P here. Okay, and then I'm actually not going to label the center. I'm not going to worry about M because in this alternative method, we use one of the circle theorems, and that is angle in a semicircle. So this is necessarily 90 degrees. And that allows us to use Pythagoras. It must be that AP squared plus pb squared is equal to ab squared. We've already got this one. It was root 26 squared, so it's 26. Okay, time to find ap and pb. So ap is op 
minus OA using the ideas from, from before. So P zero minus three minus three two zero which gives P minus three minus two and minus three. We'll deal with finding the length in a minute. Let's work out PB in the same way. It's going to be OB minus OP. So B was four, two minus five minus P zero minus three. 4 minus p, 2 minus 2. So then AP squared, I can just do my 3D Pythagoras as I've talked about before. P minus 3 squared plus minus 2 squared plus minus 3 squared. Plus 4 minus p squared plus 2 squared plus minus two squared, that is PB squared, and that's going to equal 26. See, we haven't had to deal with the vectors as much. I don't know, like there's, there's a lot to do here because whilst I could use the idea of completing the square to, to solve this one quickly, here I've got to, I've got to expand loads of brackets now. So P squared minus six P plus nine, expanding that first double bracket, plus four plus nine plus 16 minus eight p plus p squared plus four plus four is 26. Right, add the like terms. We've got two p squared minus 14 p and the rest I'm gonna use a calculator for. So four, As I'm doing it, I'm going to minus 26 from both sides, so I get 11. Oh, I forgot the 9. So apologies. So I get 20. Divide through by 2. Factorize. It's going to be P minus 5, P minus 2 equals 0, so P is equal to 2 or 5. All right, all I can say is keep practicing vector questions. You know, the, the main, I guess the main principle is here. It's like, it's not, there's not that many principles. It's sort of using the, this idea. Uh, we use that a lot. And then knowing, I mean, even if you didn't necessarily need it in this question, knowing how to find the position vector of the midpoint is really useful. Knowing your 3D Pythagoras, really useful. And probably the most important thing, because if you forget any of these things, you can always get a sketch down and just visualize what's happening. Anyway, keep practicing them. Well done.